All right, hello everybody. Before I go in my car, I wanted you to see how beautiful it is in nature. But I have something in my car for us, right? Um, today we're gonna talk about truly how, how to understand your mystic self, how to understand even the Holy Scriptures in, in a mystic way, right? Because you're meant to know this. Okay, hold on. You're meant to know this. I don't know why if you... Aw, I'm hearing a Beatles song. I don't know why nobody told you how to unfold your love, right? Let me just grab this. Let's stay out in nature. Um, I have three different things, but... All right. That's My Guitar Gently Weeps. I sang that. I sang part of it the other day because I was just inspired. Okay, now if it gets too windy, see, I have no feedback. I'm not doing this live for people to tell me whether you can hear me. And, and I don't want you to lose any of this. Okay, so let's go, let's go with, first understand that you are a soul. You are a soul in a body, right? This is the body that I happen to be in. Right, and I call myself uh, Cheryl or Dr. Cheryl Meyer in my profession. I'm a psychologist and a YouTuber, you know, social media person. Just because I wanted to get these truths out to more people than just one person in my office or, you know, four people a day or whatever it is in my office. All right, so you are worth knowing this. So what I was saying about that is you are a soul in a body. Now, as a soul, you get things spiritually, your soul or spirit. So you can get things spiritually. Now, even people that aren't religious get things spiritually, right? Because we're spirits. We're made in the image and likeness of God. And so, let me throw this stuff down. All right, so I'm here to equip you. What I used to say is, I help people navigate their spiritual awakening. And then this is understand yourself, right? Understand the principle of how things work. When you say something like that, I was declaring myself to do that because what I was noticing was that I kept looking to divine love. I call God divine love, you know? I kept looking to God to help me navigate through this spiritual awakening that I was quote, like forced to go through, you know? That I was going through. First, first, be present, all right? Watch. I often watch the leaves and trees. Now, you don't want to depend on anything else because you have this presence already in you, but watch. See this, the leaves blowing in this tree right here? Put your feet on the ground, right? Your feet are on the ground, wherever you are. Even if you're up high in a building, your feet are on the ground. Feel yourself in your body. And be at ease, be at ease. Choose no matter what is going on right now around you to be at ease for this video as best as you can. Just trust that there's a sovereign divine love that knew you needed to hear this today and it came to you, right? I drop, I wear this to remember to drop down from my head into my heart. I don't always do it, but it's coming to mind right now to remind you to drop down out of your head into your heart, into your heart space. My brother told me the other day, my, my older brother told me we're meant to live in that heart space, right? And so let's get these foundational things first. You are more than your name. I am more than my name your soul and a body and you have access look at this beautiful tree look at the roots you know you have access to see the wind when the wind is blowing in the trees it reminds in the leaves it reminds me of just how our body is animated we're animated spirit like i wear this sometimes i show my fingernail polish see that because when you can see in meditation sometimes 
you can see our, our spiritual body looks like that. You know, it's the shining. C.S. Lewis said we'd be tempted to worship each other if we saw our spiritual beings. But and then St. John of the Cross says, you know, these are people that studied this their whole lives, you know, and um, he says that there are these thought forms in us, you know, uh, that it's kind of like shroud us in darkness. Now, I don't want you to be scared by that, right? And so this is why I was saying you can, you can get um, things in your spirit. You hear things spiritually because you are spirit, but not everybody knows how to discern those things or if they are of good, if they are of the Holy Spirit, or if they are of wicked, evil ones pretending to be, pretending to be good or just, um, or just our appetites, you know, our appetites are like voices inside our stomachs like I'm hungry you know I want to eat I want to go do this and so um, you know I don't I'm a psychologist in my day job so I'm not I'm not encouraging anyone to go into some weird uh, you know um, insane path you know so I don't always talk about these things because Probably it would take me about two hours to talk about one of the subjects in depth so that you could understand it. And, and some of you have a lot of understanding and study of this already. So I'm trusting that, right? Now, I was reading last night. I have a whole series of about 35 videos already, one hour videos on mysticism the study of the nature and development of spiritual consciousness by Evelyn Underhill. She was, she wrote it. She was Anglican. That's what C.S. Lewis was. And so she doesn't go far off into like any new age thing or anything. So you're, you're in my estimation, you're safe going there because there's a lot of people that will take you off path. Now there's a lot of people that are off path that have like 95% really good, a lot of information, but they'll start bringing you uh, at the core off path. And, and I don't want to do that for anybody, but you know, I, that's, I just encourage you to use discernment. But she was saying in her mysticism book, in the part that I read last night that I haven't posted yet. So it'll be maybe video 38 or so. And I think I've posted 35 because I read them. They take an hour to read. So I'll read them sometimes when I get a chance, but she was saying, let me just share with you something that she was saying about your mystic understanding. Everybody's mystic understanding is like an artist will get impressions from the higher realm, from the oneness that is the divine love. And you'll get the impressions. And it's like, I've learned a lot of different languages and I always like trying to communicate to people and translate to them so that they can understand because I don't want people to be without understanding. I think because I felt so confused in some ways as a child, I have that compassion where I don't want anyone to be confused. I want you to know everything. And so sometimes I say way too much in one video, you know, because I'll just try to explain way too much instead of just one topic, right? Now I want to tell you actually or what I was saying earlier is that when you make an I am statement, I want to complete that thought. When you make an I, thank you God for reminding me, an I am statement like I am, I am Dr. Cheryl Meyer and I help people navigate through their spiritual awakening. It's like, as I started doing that and giving back to you guys, you know, I've made over 800 videos and that's not to brag. That's just to say, I did it. You know, I did it. Act in, it, act, you know, I have songs from way back where I, 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 this is a clinical term, sucked really bad at guitar. I was not that good at guitar or singing. I only started taking singing lessons about three months ago, or I don't remember, maybe within the last six months, but uh, not every week either. You know what I mean? Just once a week. So, um, you know, I think sixth grade choir we had, we had required a choir class, but that was in a group. That was not anyway. And so what I'm saying is you start doing even when you're not good at that. Now I've been doing the psychology thing, being a psychologist, studying, I got my, my master's. So that's six years of school already back in a long time ago, in the nineties, right? And so over, th over uh, 
30 years I've been studying this, over 30 years I've been studying this in school and practicing. And so I knew that part, but, but how to convey it in a video. Now I'm just telling you guys this, not, not to talk about myself, but so that you know how to do, how to do your path, how to do, how to actualize what you're here. Because everyone asks, what's my purpose here? What, what can I, I'm gonna get over here in the sun. What can I do? What, what am I meant to do here? All right, and so, um, so that's how, is when you start saying, this is what I am, because you just notice that's what you're doing. And then when I call myself that, I just reinforce that. And then what happens is divine love will help you. They call it the universe, other people do, you know, the universe will help you when you're doing anything out of love, you know. Um, I just keep, I'm hearing the verse, the pure in heart, all things are pure, but it's like, it, it will just come to you. Now people can be, and that doesn't mean once I started doing this, that I was perfect in my life. I, I still had a lot of insecurities, a lot of hangups, a lot of stuff I've been working on psychologically, but let's go back to, I, I want to give you this resource. Okay. Now I read this this morning, uh, early this morning before I started reading, uh, scripture. Now understand I, I don't want this to go to, it says don't cast your pearls before pigs. And so I want to under, I want to do that. I want to, I don't know. I was asking God, I still don't know the answer to this. How am I meant to make videos for people? And, and, you know, just, just trust that God will bring it to the right people. Not that anyone is a pig. It's not like that. It's when I was reading this commentary from the 1100s, he was saying, um, one way to understand that, that the swine are the people that call themselves Christians, actually, that uh, are not practicing it, that are caught up back in the world, that um, don't want to turn away from from the way... Oh, I know, one woman on YouTube calls them double agents, right? And she's like, and you were a double agent before as well. And so it's not to judge anyone, it's to go, you know, if I have one foot going towards God and then my allegiance keeps going back to my flesh, to, to doing whatever I feel like doing, to um, just running after my appetites and and those kinds of things, then I'm, I'm being a double agent. And so when you cast your pearls, when you give these pearls of wisdom to people, who aren't fully surrendered to divine love, to God, you know. Um, then it says they'll, they'll um, trample your pearls and you as well. All right. And so anyway, let me read this. Um, this is a, this is a prayer from John, St. John Chrysostom before reading or listening to the word of God. And this is what my intention was today, to give this to you. All right. Now, I'll, I'll show a picture of it because if it goes over 15 minutes and you're on my other social media, then go to my YouTube channel and subscribe there. But All right. He was from the 300s or so. And, and I read this this morning and I just, everything opened up because I set my intention before I was reading. Um, I was my my intuition said where is that prayer so I looked it up in a book that I knew I had it in and so I read it and so you can you can read this before you pray I mean before you read the scripture or listen to it O Lord Jesus Christ open thou the eyes of my heart that I might hear thy word and understand and do thy will for I am a sojourner upon the earth hide not thy commandments from me but open mine eyes that I may perceive the wonders of thy law. Speak unto me the hidden and secret things of thy wisdom. On thee do I set my hope, O my God, that thou shalt enlighten my mind and understanding with the light of thy knowledge, not only to cherish those things which are written, but to do them, that in reading the lives and sayings of the saints, I may not sin, but that such may serve for my restoration, enlightenment, and sanctification, for the salvation of my soul, and the inheritance of life everlasting. For thou art the enlightenment of those who lie in darkness, and from thee cometh every good deed and every gift. Amen. Thou art the enlightenment of those who lie in darkness, 
and from thee cometh every good deed and every gift. Amen. And so amen means let it be done. All right. And so when you understand, when you understand that, that what I'm talking about so far, what I'm noticing that I'm talking about so far is when you set your intention, you know, that sets the course. Hi, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> priests are over there and I'm laying on the ground, but that's okay. Um, that sets the course of things. All right. And so one, okay. So I want, I want you to know how you can understand yourself in spirit and start noticing. And even if you're really well versed at this, um, ask God for discernment and how to start noticing how to, how to discern these things. Okay. So here's an example, right? And if I end up editing this, which I don't always have the time to do that, I, it's whatever God calls me to do. Um, you know, I say it like that. It's not that I always know. I'm, I'm just asking, you know, like direct my day. I say that in the morning. That's an intention that I said. And so, hold on. All right. Um, So I made a video, I looked because it was about five weeks ago. I just added this this morning. I made a video about, see, listen to the birds right now. There was one that was just right before this, right? And so I was on a walk and I was in prayer. I was in my meditation, my contemplation. And it was like the bird. So, okay, so listen to what I was talking about with Evelyn Underhill talking about your mystic self, your spirit self will get something in your heart and then you'll try to translate it. I was trying to translate it to myself because I heard a bird and it was before Easter, right? And so we were contemplating Jesus on the cross. Now I welcome all religions, right? I always welcome because I believe the same creator created all of us. And so you're meant to know that you are soul. You are a spirit in a body. Um, you know, I say that all the time, so watch it on all my videos, right? So I won't go over all of that every time, but... Notice again, am I at ease? What's going on inside of my thoughts and feelings as, as, as she's saying this, as I'm saying this, you know? All right, and so I made this one minute video where I said, I heard a bird and all of a sudden it was like I saw Jesus on the cross saying it is finished but I saw him like walking then after that as a schoolboy right as just like a, a English like a British schoolboy right like blowing bubbles or something you know it's like that you know oh there's a lightning seed song called blowing bubbles I think but anyway He's just like being, he's just like, I finished this, Cheryl. I did everything. I got all A's. Like I did the work. You don't have to prove yourself anymore. I give you my righteousness. You can have this. Now, all of what I'm saying right now is a mystery. Hopefully it just opened up for you because we read that prayer. If you said it sincerely with me, you know, or go back and watch it and say it sincerely with me because I'm about to share a scripture with you. So what happened was that was five weeks ago and I asked God, you know, help, help confirm, help me know that that's of you. That's not just my imagination making that up. I know that he did say it is finished and he wanted me to know that. And that was one way my own self was trying to convey it back to myself so that I could know that truth on a level that would get through my old programming from childhood, your old programming from childhood, us understanding we're not threatened by, you know, it's like if there's this mysterious person, creature that, you know, is dressed up like a priest and, and, or a rabbi, you know, and has the beard and it's like from 2000 years ago, he's like, I'm Jesus, you know, we might not understand it, but if there's that song like, what if God was one of us? Just a stranger on a bus, you know, trying to make his way home, right? Even you can think of Christ was like that. There's a lot of that song that is expressing Christ, you know, but that's her just exploring the image that came to her through a song, you know, that's why I teach through songs. Uh, I call myself a lyrical psychologist now too, because someone told me that's my 
title and I was like, oh, that is, you know, I, I got to confirm if that is, but God will make me such more. And just like you, you know, don't confirm titles that other people give you or slander that other people give you like your childhood, your parents, unless, unless it's true, right? I was reflecting on that this morning. I'd love to do a whole video on that. But one sentence on it is just like, if your parents taught you how to be prejudiced, and when you're 13, you're like, that's stupid. Divine love, God created everybody. I'm not gonna be prejudiced and think these people are less than me because they're from a different country or they have a different color or whatever. It's like, I'm gonna choose not to take that in as truth anymore. Well, you learned how to be prejudiced against yourself. That's your childhood programming. And so the scripture, the scripture is not like, oh, let me be holy and read scripture. It's like, no, the scripture will inform you in your everyday life how to undo those lies. It teaches you deep mysteries that you're meant to keep feeding your soul with in a real live way so that it undoes the, the lies that you automatically took in because what else could you do when you're three, you know? It's like if, we, if there's a 10 year old that's prejudiced or an eight year old, we're not gonna get all mad at the eight year old. We're gonna teach them what's true. Well, that's what we're doing to ourselves. You're, you're bringing a higher level of consciousness to yourself. Now the problem is as well, now understand what I'm saying. Watch this over and over again. I say that and I mean that, not because I need view counts. I don't care about that, right? I'm not invested. I'm saying watch this over and over so that you can get these truths is that we don't stop and give ourselves this level of consciousness, this level of understanding, you know, this level of truth because our parents also, that they didn't give that to us. They taught us by their actions and we internalize this that you're not worth a higher level of consciousness. You're not worth a higher level of awareness. You're worth, let's say, like a fake Christianity or a fake uh, Judaism or whatever, whatever, you know, oh, we say we follow this, but we don't follow truth. Like even Buddha, I was reading some writings about what he was saying. He's like, I am a truth seeker. The word Buddha means awakened, awakened one, right? And anyone that is awakened, you're awakened to truths. And I found that and I have it in a different video. I haven't posted it yet. So I plan to put it with that, is um, these, these Buddhist scriptures where he was saying the Christ is going to come, look to him. But, but I'm, not, I'm not trying to convert you right now. I'm just being present with what I know, what I've experienced so that you can have access to this, right? And so, um, so back to, I got that intuition, I got that inner contemplation, that translation. Now it doesn't mean it's perfect, but it means hey, if other people can understand Christ better, I saw him like a schoolboy saying, it's finished, I got all A's. Why do you keep acting like I didn't get all A's and I didn't complete this? I didn't have victory over sin. I didn't defeat the devil. I didn't step on him and defeat his rule over, over your flesh and over your impulses in this world and um, over that mindset, that old lack mindset that you don't have to have anymore. I stepped on that and I went to Hades and I set the captives free. I went to the underworld and offered them this salvation and brought them up in that one time, right? The people that came before Christ. Because everyone asks, oh, well, that's not fair. What about the people that came before Christ? Well, they had the prophets that were telling them this, but if they were of different faiths or whatever, whoever was in hell at the time, Hades, Sheol, it says Christ went down and, and set the captives free. So I don't know how or who or what, you know, God's in charge of that, right? But, okay, here's to come back to how you can confirm these things. And uh, many of you already know how to use discernment, but this will just add to whatever your knowing is. Is so, and I won't make this much longer. I don't, I don't plan to. Is that, so this morning, um, the, I, I attend this, this morning prayer thing where they read through a couple or one of the Psalms and part of the Old Testament and the New Testament. So every morning we wake up and we say the Our Father, you know, your will be done today. Now, some people, we just say it by rote, but, you know, you think that if we're getting up early in the morning, hopefully that God will help us to be really conscious, you know, 
and, and mean that and invite divine love to direct our lives instead of just these brains. These brains are so small compared to the brain, the, the mind of divine love that you have access to spiritually. Jesus said a time will come when people will worship in spirit and in truth, right? Okay, so the verse this morning was um, Psalm 124. Listen to what it said, because I could hear it. It says, um, oh, and I have, I didn't write all of it on this. I wrote it on my phone. So that's what I'm using to video this right now. So, but I wrote this part. Okay, so the, one, the verses before it uh, say, say so much even more. But this is the part that all of a sudden it came to my memory about Jesus like the bird singing. And now every time I hear a bird, not every time, but hopefully as soon if I'm conscious, if I'm in the present moment, when I hear a bird, I will hear the bird saying, it's finished. Remind yourself it's finished. Just like I have a note in my car. This isn't dumb. Your mind will call this dumb. She's too stupid, whatever. I know because my mind goes blah, 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 right? It's like I have this bracelet that says, Lo, I am with you always because I forget all the time. And I have a little note in my phone that says, be present. I have post-it notes all over my house that say be present to remind myself be in this present moment don't be fighting with reality like I had to feel like I felt like I had to fight all the time in childhood to stay alive to, to, to feel like I was worth being alive you know I was always fighting so I'm like a fighter you know and sometimes that makes you um you know I was reading this book Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle and he's talking about you know when you keep being negative negative in this world you're not like when you're in that negative energy not very many good things come out of that negative energy because that negative energy pollutes good things and so even though I'm trying to fight and everything you know um if I'm in resistance about it then I'm bringing negative energy into stuff I can talk about that another time here's the verse right it says, our soul is, it's Psalm 124, 7. And look at verses 6 before that and 8 after that. It says, our soul is escaped, even as a bird out of the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken and we are delivered, right? The snare is broken and we are delivered. Um... Help standeth in the name of the Lord who hath made heaven and earth. That's the verse after. I think I was writing the whole the whole chapter before this. I'm not sure if I wrote I was writing a different chapter, but it says the verse before that, if, if I'm if I was writing it correctly, um, was but praise be to the Lord who hath not given us over for for a prey unto their teeth. And and I wasn't thinking of the verse first right i wasn't thinking of the the sun the the bird i i was just quiet and i was listening to the verses and all of a sudden when i saw when i heard the part that says but praise be to the Lord that the word Lord there, L-O-R-D is capital L-O-R-D. That means the I am. Praise be to the I am. That's what we're looking at here when you look at the wind blowing in these leaves. It's like, it's that I am-ness, the I am. I am the creator. That's the divine love. I am that's in you, this I am-ness. Who are you before your name, right? God wove you together in your mother's womb, it says, you know, right? You are this isness, right?
when I get like this in my being state, I'm like, why do I, I don't even need to say anything. I don't need to say anything. That's our mind that wants to understand this. But our mind also, you know, it does, it does get to help. You get to use your mind to help discern. So when you see other scriptures will come up, this is why it's so important to get scriptures into you, even when you don't know why, you know? It's just like, why do we study the lives of the saints? Because these are actually proven, holy, conscious people that worked really hard to know the truth and died faithful, you know, or they wouldn't have been called saints. You know, hardly any of the saints, if any, were made saints unless they actually lived as saints, not these people that are wolves in sheep clothing that act good one day and then, you know, and not that any of us are perfect, but saints are the ones that weren't perfect either, but they committed their lives to this path of holiness, you know? I was looking down at my pants. I was like, see, holy. <laughs> but no, God wants us to be holy, which is whole, which is wholly aligned with truth and divine love, right? And so this verse, when I saw that given us over for prey, and he has not given us, the I am who hath not given us over for prey unto their teeth, the teeth, Jesus said, you know, I prayed for you because Satan wanted to, he said this to Peter who represents the church, because Satan wanted to sift you like wheat. But I prayed that your faith, I prayed that your faith fail not. So I used to think that he prayed that we wouldn't get sifted. I'm like, I'm feeling pretty sifted lately, God. You know, that's like, get all of anything that's not of God out of me. That's what happens. He says that I, Jesus said, I prayed for you. He prayed for us. He prayed for all of us that our faith would fail not. He prayed for all of us through Peter. And later on, he prayed that those who come to this knowledge through the disciples, I pray for them as well. And that's us, you know? And so, um, and then the next verse, our soul is escaped, even as a bird out of the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken and we are delivered. And so in one sense, right, we are delivered. That snare is broken. When Jesus died, he, he was a perfect man that didn't sin. And so he undid the capture of death for us. Adam brought death. Jesus brought life. So you can have this life. He set us free somehow mystically. He set us free if you accept this freedom, if you accept his righteousness. Um, Whatever he did for us to set us free, he did that. And so he took us out of the snare. And now St. John of the Cross says, if you're like a little bird, he says, if you're like a little bird and you have one string left because you choose, you refuse to surrender your whole self to God. Now God will help you do this. So it's not of your own efforts, but do of your own efforts and ask God to do all of it before that and after that, you know. They say road ashore as if you're doing it and, and then trust that God will bring you there as if he's doing all of it but that's one way to say it but he said if you have one little string left ask God to help pull that string so you're fully surrendered to God so you can fly already we're meant to fly watch my video called from now on I am a swan because all of this this verse probably was highlighted because I was focusing on and believing that I am a swan I am a soul with a name all right, so I wish you much love. I hope this enriched you. Much love.